In the year 1727, scarcity of water forced the king of Amir, Jai Singh II, to move to a new capital, Jaipur, that was just six miles away. Today, Amir is a unique example of early 18th century town planning. In a desert region where sunlight is harsh and summer temperatures high, the architecture of Amir Fort clearly shows that people in those days cared about nature and built the monument around it. Huge courtyards throughout the fort admit just enough sunlight to come in. The open spaces also help in the constant flow of air in the building. Jali's or checkered windows were not only a privacy tool, they also acted as ventilators for all seasons. Three centuries later, many buildings in modern India largely ended up being huge glass and steel boxes requiring massive heating and cooling systems. In India alone, buildings account for 14% of energy consumption. Today many architects are going back to the traditional principles of designing, hoping to reduce energy consumption and adverse environmental impact. That is the key goal of the green architecture movement, which is changing the way buildings are designed, built and run. At first glance, it is difficult to suspect that the retreat complex in Gurgaon is as earth-friendly as an old windmill. But to understand what Terry did to make it different, we would have to know that the complex generates its own electricity. All of its energy comes from a biomass gasifier and photovoltaic panels that convert sunlight into electricity. Retreat also acts as a training facility for different organizations. The 24 rooms in the complex have all modern day comforts, including air cooling. But interestingly, the air cooling happens through an underground tunnel system, again a feature of many traditional monuments of India. It has been scientifically proven that temperatures at 4 meters below the ground remain constant throughout the year. This property of the earth has been used to heat and cool the residential rooms in the retreat building. There are four tunnels of concrete pipes, which are laid at a depth of four meters below the earth's surface. As the air is pushed through the tunnel by the fans, there is an exchange of heat between the air and the surrounding earth. Hence, during the summer, the air gets cooled up to 28 degrees Celsius, and during winters, it gets heated up to 22 degrees Celsius. This air is in turn circulated to the rooms by using a fan. The rooms have an outlet in the form of solar chimneys. And all the extra investment in the tunnel system was paid back in the first year of its operation. The retreat building incurred an additional investment of 7% compared to a similar conventional building. But thanks to its sustainable design, the complex already saves 40% energy every year. Spread over a radius of 13 kilometers, the Golconda Fort was built between the 12th and 16th centuries. At that time, soldiers sent messages about an impending attack through a well-devised acoustic system. Today, the fort attracts 1,000 visitors a day because of this unique piece of architecture. But very few people know that the fort, built on a hill, had an ingenious water system that ensured 24-hour water supply to the walled city. Water was sourced from a secret lake, which was four kilometers away. A canal was constructed to route the water. Perhaps it was just common sense, and the architects decided to use the principle of gravity to supply water in all the areas of the fort. Water tanks were constructed to store rainwater. At that time, there was hardly a scarcity.
that people were conscious about conserving water. In a small town near Ahmedabad, a school is shedding all conventional norms to provide holistic education to its students. This nursery classroom was designed with a clear-cut concept. The children should not be confined to the four walls of a class and the school building should take the kids closer to nature. The architects Nimesh Patel and Parul Javeri also had to prove a point that schools with air conditioning don't make for better education. They had to create an alternative role model that played with the natural forces and kept the temperature of the school to the minimum. For a hot and dry climate like Gujarat, the architects applied a simple yet effective technique of passive downdraft cooling, which is now solely responsible for keeping the temperatures of the classrooms always under control. Each classroom is connected to an inlet shaft from where the cool air comes in. Hot air in the classroom automatically rises and gets out through an exhaust shaft, which is built on the outer periphery of the school building. At the top of these shafts, there are cooling pads, where water is constantly sprayed to keep the temperatures low. Partly because of the philosophy of the school, and partly because of the building's sustainable architecture, the children here are environmentally very conscious. Perhaps in the future, many of them would prefer working with nature than fighting it.